former industrial routes, Walk 16, Plesley Vale and Meaden Trail. Tuesday the 13th of December 2011 and no names and I are off again. But this time we're off to check out Plesley Vale and the Meaden Trail. Now I remember wandering around in Plesley Vale many years ago when my kids were young. They used to love it down there. And we did live in Plesley at the time, so it was very convenient for us. Back then, I remember that the old mill complex was basically in ruin, but stood like a giant silent ghost dominating the area all around. But apparently, just as it was about to be pulled down, it received funding at the 11th hour to regenerate it into new business premises. So let's see how it went, shall we? It's just before half past 12 and I utter those immortal words. Are we going out mate? And instantly a previously sleepy and don't really care no names is wide awake and excitedly alert. He goes to the door whining as he waits for me to get organised. Once I've loaded up with the camber, the spare batteries, along with the usual other stuff we take along with us on our walks, we're off. No names, as usual, whines a little on the outward journey. But at least he doesn't bark at everything and everybody on the way anymore. We're down to embarking at most things now, but not all, so that's an improvement. Twenty minutes after uttering those fateful words, I'm parking up the Trekmobile in Plesley Village Square. I can park here as long as I like, for free, and it's just over the road from the very start of the area called Plesley Vale. Plesley is located on the county boundary, and the River Meaden that flows through the heart of the village acts as the natural boundary between the two counties. When No Names and I first venture onto the path between the post office and the river, we are actually in Nottinghamshire. But a little further into the Vale, we will cross the river into Derbyshire. Plesley Colliery and the area of residency known as Upper Plesley is in the Derbyshire Bolsover District Council area, whereas the very familiar Plesley Hill with its long row of terraced houses, now up for demolition, alongside the main A617 into Mansfield, is in Nottinghamshire's Mansfield District Council area. A few yards further along we pass under the A617 Plesley Bypass. A left turn soon after going under the bridge and a hundred yards or so as we enter through a horse and wheel user friendly barrier into the Vale. It is winter so the trees are bare and sport little life. However, the river to our left is the most dominant sound and full of life, with its colony of ducks and the continuous splashing and rippling of the water's flow. The path is flat and reasonably well surfaced to allow easy access to all users, and it's not long before we are passing the steep slope of the joining path to our ride that signals the start of the Meaden Trail. But today we are not going up there yet, but continuing onward towards the mill complex. However, our return journey will bring us down this slope from the Meaden Trail. Within minutes we are crossing a newly modernised wooden bridge over the river and entering into Derbyshire. From here the path climbs gradually upwards towards the car park, but the surface is not too great as it is rather muddy and slippery in places as well as being quite narrow. I'm sure during the summer months this path will be much better. As we enter the car park we see no vehicles parked up whatsoever but regular traffic to and from the Plesley Mills complex uses the lane alongside. All we find in the car park are lots of windfall apples and a couple of information boards. One with no information on it. On about information. Plesley Vale is a nature reserve and also the end or start of two other cross country green routes. The Meaden Trail as I mentioned before and the much acclaimed Archaeological Way or Cresswell Archaeological Way. A 13 mile route that takes in the delights of Plesley Vale, Langworth Wood, Polter Country Park, Scarcliffe Wood, Markland Grips and the famous Cresswell Crags and it was officially opened by the well-known Derbyshire long distance walker and walking author John Merrill. At the opposite end of the car park we access the continuation of the footpath which undulates and twists through the woodland alongside the River Meaden and is really only suitable for walking. Wheelchair and equestrian travel along this path I think would prove to be rather difficult. A small canal type waterway seems to have been in use at some point alongside the river and a couple of old water control constructions, no longer in use of course, are still left standing though rapidly falling into ruin. Here a path goes off to our right and crosses over another wooden bridge to the Nottinghamshire side of the river into another part of the Vale. But No Names and I are going straight on. 
Soon we see our first sighting of the famous mills, just before the path exits onto Outgang Lane. With no names now on his leash, we walk down the lane a little, before knocking on the door of the security lodge to ask permission to walk along the lane through the mill complex and take some photographs. A five minute chat with the security officer on duty at the time, who also makes a big fuss of no names, our access is granted and confirmed as we do not actually need permission to walk through. There are CCTV cameras everywhere around the mill complex and the security is mainly involved with controlling vehicle access. Lots of photographs ensue around the areas of the mill complex we are permitted to enter, mainly because of personal safety, as a lot of vehicles, forklift trucks and other equipment are about the area. No Names is a little grumpy because he has to stay on the lead while we are around the mills, but within a quarter of an hour we are leaving the mills behind as we enter the peaceful hamlet of Little Matlock, sometimes known as Plesley Vale Village. The Cenotaph still supports the popularies from Remembrance Day a month ago. No Names is allowed off his leash again, as although the lane carries a little traffic, most of the traffic enters the mill complex from the other end. The area is so quiet and peaceful, even the quietest vehicle can be heard long before it is actually seen, so plenty of time to grab No Names and prevent any accidents. We ascend the path alongside a rock face that takes us by the 19th century cottages of Plesley Vale Village. A plaque on the wall, as the path exits onto a narrow access road, reads Plesley Vale Village 1854 and confirming that these houses were indeed built in the 19th century. Much like many other buildings in these former coal mining areas, although Plesley Vale is not renowned for coal mining, but instead for its archaeological history, former cotton mills and the location of one of the first iron forges in the area, the other being at Kirkby in Ashfield. We exit the access road onto the lane once again and turn left to pass down to walk along another access road on the right that leads to St Chad's Church, an old, I believe, 18th or 19th century small brick built church, just big enough to accommodate the small congregation of Plesley Vale and Little Matlock. Just beyond the church the access road becomes more of a track allowing vehicle access to local detached residences. As this track crosses a small bridge over the River Meaden, two footpaths go off further into the Vale, away from civilization. No names and I go for the one on the left, it looks less muddy, and soon find ourselves in a stunning dale, not unlike the beautiful Peak District Dales, but on a much smaller scale, with the river providing the course of the grassy dale and large rocky outcrops lining the sides. This all too short but beautiful dale soon comes to an end, at a woodland area close to a railway line that is still in use. A stile allows us to cross the railway by a level path to the stile on the other side. Of course, I've put no names on the lead for this. Perish the thought of him running off along the railway and me not being able to catch him quickly if need be. The area on the far side of the railway is vaguely familiar, as I come to the conclusion that we are now close to the area of the former Shirebrook Colliery. Now a large industrial estate and the location of the SportsDirect.com main distribution centre on the outskirts of Shirebrook Wood. We don't have time to go exploring Shirebrook Wood, and I promise myself I'll explore it some other time. So it's about turn and head on back towards Plesley Vale, and my plan is to use the Meaden Trail from the Plesley Vale Lane close to Mansfield Woodhouse as our route back to the Trekmobile. We have returned to the lane through Plesley Vale and take a left turn to walk gradually uphill for a quarter of a mile to join the Meaden Trail on our right. The Meaden Trail track bed proves to be well surfaced and flat with no inclines apart from a minor one at the start. For the most part the trail is lined with trees, with just the occasional clear view out over the surrounding countryside, and soon we find ourselves passing through a cutting and beneath a three arched stone built bridge. Soon after this I notice a few small caves in the surrounding rock outcrops and scramble up the bank on a few occasions to take a close look, but most are too small for further exploration, with the exception of one which is gated to stop access for safety reasons. Soon the cutting has become an embankment, and we can once again catch glimpses of the surrounding countryside to our left, however any views over open countryside to our right are now obscured by the Splitsley Mills complex which we passed earlier on the opposite side. A footpath allows us to get down into the Plesley Vale Nature Reserve that we passed through earlier. No Names and I wander once again into the reserve so I can grab a few more photographs before we ascend the path back onto the Meaden Trail. Within 10 minutes the trail has come to its end above the Vale as we descend the side path back down to retrace our earliest steps of the day 
I return back to the Trekmobile parked in Pleasley Village about another 10 minutes later, as the sun is beginning to set, ready for our ride home and our anxiously awaited cups of tea.